he wanted to overcome the drought. The man had been working in the fields for two days in a row and was hungry and thirsty. His son walked over carrying a radio and a windmill. The father did not understand what his son was trying to do. The boy stuck the windmill into the ground. Then he took the batteries out of the radio. To his surprise, the radio could still make sound. The son said that when the windmill turned, it could generate electricity. If they replaced the blades with larger ones, it could drive a water pump. It could draw water up from underground to irrigate the fields. The father did not believe him, but he did not stop him either. Then his son said he wanted to take apart his bicycle. It was the only valuable thing the family owned. The father became very angry and said that a windmill could not change the drought. For so many years, no one had been able to defeat the drought. How could a child like you possibly do it? He told his father that he had been to school and knew more than his father. Those words deeply hurt his father, who had never been to school. He pushed William over and broke the windmill. He had never thought about what sending his son to school might lead to. In the end, sending his son to school became a tool his son used to humiliate him. The father told him to work in the field. From then on, he was not allowed to go to school. William burst into aggrieved tears. From that day on, he did as his father said. He worked in the fields. He still wanted to keep learning. Whenever he had time, he helped neighbors repair their radios. While repairing them, he kept learning. He also secretly went to the school to listen to classes. Because his family owed tuition, the headmaster drove him away. Because of the severe drought, his family could not even get enough to eat, let alone pay his tuition. Even worse, a heavy rain suddenly came. Floodwater rushed into the village. In the past, in order to make money, the village villagers had made a choice. They had cut down all the trees that protected the village. No one had listened to the village chief's advice. His father had not been able to stop everyone either. The sound of cutting trees spread throughout the village. William could do nothing about it. After the rain stopped, the village became quiet again. Soon, there was severe drought again. The crops died and the fields cracked open. The family no longer had any income. To get some grain, the father tore down the roof, hoping to trade it for food. The price of grain was rising very fast. He joined the protest group. He hoped the government would help them. After that, the government's grain trucks arrived. His mother told William to hurry and buy grain. There were so many people that he could only force his way into the crowd. Each person was allowed to buy only 30 kilos of grain. Carrying the sack of grain on his back, he did not dare go far. He knew that many people on the road had not been able to buy grain. Some people even tried to snatch grain and got into fights. At that moment, a stranger broke into their house and took away the flour. The backyard was also looted clean. Only his mother was left crying. That night, his father came back. There was only enough food in the house for one more day. His sister ran out of the house and blamed their father for going to protest. Their mother slapped her. She knew her daughter was not wrong, but she also understood her husband's choice. He was trying to protect the family. The mother decided to support her husband. Hearing these words, the father felt powerless and ashamed. He kept working the cracked land. The man who had never been superstitious also began to pray to the sky for rain. But the drought became more and more severe, and the land had no sign of life. People could only wait for death. No one had expected who would finally bring hope. It turned out to be a 13-year-old child.